Use the technique illustrated at the beginning of the section to show that the statements in A and B are true. So this is an if then statement here. Now we wanna show that when we multiply these five factors together, we get one sixth. Now there's two ways of showing this and it's important to understand that we only do one of these techniques because we're supposed to use the technique illustrated at the beginning of this section. The incorrect way of showing that this is true is by evaluating it by hand. For example, the first factor is one minus one half, which is one half. The second factor is one minus one third, which is two thirds. The third factor is one minus one fourth, which is three fourths. The fourth factor is four fifths. And the last factor is five sixths. Now, algebraically, we can see that a bunch of these numerators and denominators cancel and we're left with one sixth. But this is not how we're supposed to show that this is true. Nowhere in this procedure did we use our premise, which tells us what we get when we multiply the first four factors together. We get one fifth. So let me show you a different way of approaching this. I'm going to write the first four factors in blue and I'll write the last factor in red. The reason I do this is because we can actually evaluate what we get when we multiply these first four factors together. According to our premise here, we get to assume that when we multiply these four factors together, we get one fifth. So this is equal to one fifth times one minus one sixth, which is just five sixths. And instead of canceling every single one of those numerators and denominators, we actually just have to cancel one denominator and one numerator to get our final answer one sixth. So it's important to understand that there's two ways of solving this, but this question is trying to get you to solve it a particular way. And it's this way where we take the first four factors and we replace that, we substitute that with one fifth, which comes directly from the premise of this if then statement. So now let's do part B. This says if one minus one half times one minus one third times one minus one fourth times one minus one fifth times one minus one sixth equals one sixth. We actually just showed that in part A. Then let's prove that this whole thing equals one seventh. Now, again, the incorrect way of doing this is by evaluating each one of these factors and then canceling a bunch of numerators and denominators. That is not how I want you to solve this. Instead, we're gonna take this chunk of factors these first five factors, when you multiply them together, we get one sixth. And so this is really one sixth times one minus one seventh. And that's by substitution. That's using the premise of part B to substitute the first five factors with one sixth. So now I just have to evaluate what this is. This is one sixth times six sevenths. And I just have to cancel one denominator and one numerator to get one seventh. And so if you notice, we can just keep applying this logic to show that if we multiply another factor of one minus one eighth, we'd end up getting one eighth at the end. And this really gets to the heart of the inductive step. Right now, what we're doing is we're showing the inductive step case by case. Keep in mind that the inductive step is simply a generalization of this process. Instead of proving the next fraction is one eighth by taking the previous fraction and multiplying it by one minus one eighth, we can generalize this process to show that if I have a bunch of multiplications of one minus one half, one minus one third, one minus one fourth, all the way to one minus one over n, we can generalize this process to show that the result will be one over n, whatever n is. We can imagine doing this process all the way to one minus one over 100 or one minus one over a thousand. We can keep going from part A to part B. We can make a part C, we can make a part D and we can just keep going. And the inductive step is a generalization of this process. Instead of proving that one case proves the next case, we generalize it to show that any arbitrary case will imply the next case. And that generalization is the inductive step. Thanks everyone and I'll see you in the next video.